Alright! Now, today we are going to take our Lewis dot diagrams, which you have drawn for single atoms. And we're going to use the system to draw the molecules. All right? Now, I thought this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy, but last hour, they were very confused when I got done. And last hour is an advanced class. Okay? So, at first I was alarmed and then I remembered. Typically the way this goes is we go through it and you're like, huh, I didn't quite get that. And we, the next day we work on it a little bit and then pretty soon a light bulb just clicks on and you go, oh, this is easy, okay? Uh, but I understand that it might be a little bit difficult to start with. But it really shouldn't be, okay? Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. There we go, we have full attention. In order, in order to do this process, you have to know a couple of things before we even start it. One, you gotta know how many atoms are involved in a molecule. And two, you gotta know how many valence electrons each element in the molecule has. So let's take a look at what we have to start with. I'm going to give you sulfur trioxide. Sulfur trioxide. All right. Now, we need to understand that if there is no number following the S, it stands for or assumed to be a 1. So there is one atom of sulfur. So we're going to put one times something. Then we have oxygen. How many atoms of oxygen do I have? Three. Times something. Well now I need to look up how many valence electrons they have. And you wrote this down someplace. So if I look up sulfur, it's over here in the same column as oxygen, which makes it nice and convenient because they're both going to have the same number of valence electrons. How many valence electrons is that? Six. So sulfur has six valence electrons. So does oxygen. One times six gives me six. Three times six gives me 18. I add those together and I have 24 valence electrons to use. And remember, valence electrons are used in bonding. So I have 24 valence electrons that are going to be used in this process to bond. All right? Now that we're at that point, my next step is to lay out my SO3 in a logical format, which means I need to know which one is the central atom. Well, typically the central atom is the least number of atoms in the molecule, which would be S. Okay? So I'm going to write down S in the middle. I have three O's, and I can put them in any one of the four different bonding areas. I'm just going to do this right now. I could have put one on top. Could have put one on top and one on the right. I could have put one on top, one bottom right, you know, so forth. But three of the four spots are filled. All right? Now, the other thing I'm going to do is write down this 24 right here. I'm going to keep track of my valence electrons. We are getting ready now to start putting our valence electrons into the bonding process. Okay? And remember, every two pair, or every two which makes up a pair, is a bond. Alright, so here's my first rule. 
I put two valence electrons <laughs> between each bond. I always do that. If there are two elements with a space between them, I put two between those, two valence electrons between them, before I do anything else. Okay? All right, now, this little number up here I keep track of. Because I have now used two, four, six, I have 18 left. Okay, my first rule was put two between each bond. My next rule is to go to the outside atoms and fulfill the octet, which means eight. Well, each one of the, the outside right now have two. They're sharing these two with the F. So this needs six more. This needs six more. This needs six more to get to eight. So I'm gonna do that. I've used all of them, correct? Now, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you understand, if there comes a point when you don't have enough dots, you're either mixing up some rules versus duet, octet, or you miscounted someplace, okay? Either we should always have an even number of dots, and we should have enough to do our process. All right, now, so now we look at it. Oxygen has eight, oxygen has eight, oxygen has eight. My next rule is I go to the central. And the central is going to need to have eight. How many does it have? Do I have any more that I can mess with? No, I'm done. I'm out. So here's the deal. I have to get eight around the sulfur. I have to get eight. But I don't have any more to mess with. So this is what I do. I go out to one of the auctions, it doesn't matter which auction, I just choose this one, and I'm gonna take these two here, and I'm gonna move them in here. So now it shares four of those there. So sulfur now, has two here, two here, and four there, which is eight. This oxygen still has eight. It's just sharing these four in the middle. Okay, that's how we get a double bond. Once I get to this point, I have to draw the structural, and the structural is pretty easy. For every pair I draw a line, there's two pair in there, single pair there, single pair there, that's what that would look like. Now, you will notice, you will notice, I don't include all of these dots that are on the O's down here. My colleague does, but I don't like to do that. I think it muddles what we're trying to do. It makes more work for you. And then when it comes time to put down uh, lone pairs, which I'll show you here in a moment, I think you have dots that can screw everything up. So we just don't do that. And it's messy. Yeah, it's messy. All right? Because we're only worried about dots on the central atom. That's it. So let's take another one. Let's take something a lot alike. But a little different. The first one we dealt with was SO3, sulfur trioxide. This is an ion. This is sulfite. Sulfite ion. Okay? So, watch what happens here. Same thing, S, how many S's do I have? One, one. one times, uh, times what, how many valence electrons? Six. Six, good. How many oxygens do I have? Three times six. six. 
And then this right here means that it's an ion. Okay? Now, remember this. If it's a negative ion, it gained electrons. If it's positive, it lost electrons. Well, according to this, it gained two electrons. So now when I add this up, I have 26 total to work with. Okay? All right. So let's do the same thing. Lay it out in a logical format. Means the S is in the middle. Okay? My first rule is to put two between each bond. So I put two, and I'm going to keep track of these 26. I've used six, so now I'm down to 20. My next rule is, I go to the outside and I fulfill the octet on those. If it needs an octet, oxygen needs eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I have two left over. My outside all have eight. And they needed eight. I have two left over. And here's my rule. Any that are left over go on the central atom. No matter what. So if you have four left over, you're going to put four on it. Here we have two left over. So I'm going to put those two right there. I've used them all. Now, when I go to the structural, I have to do this. Bond, bond, bond. And I have to show those two on the central atom. I don't show them anywhere else, only on the central atom. I have to show those on the central atom. And remember, and there'll be one coming up today or tomorrow, where you actually have an octet full and you have uh, four more to go. And last hour, one person got to it and said, well, what do I do with these? And I'll show you what you do with them. Okay? The problem you gotta worry about when you get that much octet is that you're going to uh, have so many dots you can get confused. So you got to be careful how you put them down. All right, let's take a look at another one. We're going to deal with ammonia, NH3. Ammonia. We do the same process. We have N and we have H. There's no charge, so it's not an ion. How many N's do I have here? One. How many valence electrons does N have? Five. How many atoms of H do I have? And how many valence electrons does H have? One. When I add that up, I have eight. Eight total to work with. Eight total to work with. So I lay it out in a logical format. I'm going to put N in the middle because it has the least number of atoms. I'm going to put three H's around it because it's in H3. My first rule is I put two valence electrons between each bond. And I use six, so I have two left. My next rule is I take my valence electrons and I go to the outside and I make sure they all have eight if they need it. Uh, I would need six and I need 
18! Well, I only have two! Okay, so look on that periodic table I gave you the other day. See that column that says duet rule? Yeah. Means it only needs two. Anything in that column only needs two. Hydrogen only needs two and it's already got two. That's right. And then my next rule. If I have any of them left over, where do they go? And I redraw this. Just like 